Good afternoon. My name is Peter, and welcome aboard Sailing Vessel Silver Heels My Roads 22. Uh, we're off on another week-long adventure, if everything goes according to plan. Uh, but we uh, did not just leave Pine Island Marina. <clears throat> uh, we left a boat ramp uh, in the town of South Dartmouth, Massachusetts, which is on Buzzards Bay. Uh, <clears throat> so it was about a two-hour drive to get there, uh, and uh, the, the charge for uh, leaving your car and trailer there is five dollars a day, quite reasonable, uh, and hopefully <laughs> nothing bad will happen to either uh, while we're gone. Uh, so I guess uh, we'll uh, begin with the chart. We'll start with this uh, blow-up or inset uh, section of uh, the, uh, the bay where we left from, Aponagonset Bay, <clears throat> or something like that. So here's the town of South Dartmouth. The uh, boat ramp is over in this area, and it is uh, somewhat unfortunately on the north side of this road. Uh, and that means that uh, to get out, we have to go through a drawbridge here. Now, unfortunately, I was so uh, wrapped up in <laughs> this and that uh, on leaving that I didn't take any video of, of all of that. Hopefully, maybe I'll get some uh, going back at the end of the week. So the drawbridge uh, only opens once an hour, uh, and we missed the the 12 o'clock, we weren't fast enough setting up, so we got through there at 1, but that's going to be fine. And we started coming southeast, uh, and we'll go to the bigger chart. So here we are on the bigger chart. Here again is the Ponagansett Harbor in South Dartmouth, Mass. And uh, our initial plan for today was to go east. To a place called Hadley Harbor and uh, hopefully we, we might get there later in the trip but uh, <clears throat> today uh, we're getting winds out of the east which is pretty unusual uh, but that's what they are so instead of fighting that and trying to go east we're gonna go south instead so we've come out and down out here someplace and now we're going south uh, down to Cuddyhunk uh, this is the island of Cuddyhunk, and here's the harbor, and hopefully we'll be able to find a way, a uh, place in here to uh, get protected from east winds. Uh, I haven't been in Cuddyhunk since I was a teenager, so uh, I don't remember much of it. So that's a distance of a bit over 10 miles, uh, if I added it up correctly. and. Uh, and I might be a little ambitious uh, with the late start we got, uh, but we do have a, a nice breeze. It's 10 or maybe a little bit better than that. And uh, as I said, out of the east and uh, sailing south gives us a, a beam reach. And we're moving along at uh, between four and five knots. Uh, generally in current doesn't seem to be an issue. Uh, <clears throat> so we're supposed to uh, actually uh, reach the harbor at uh, somewhere between 3 and 3.30, so uh, it won't be a long day. That is the island of Cuddyhunk and the forests of masts uh, that you might be able to see in there <coughs> is, uh, is the inner harbor and they're all on moorings in there. It's quite tight. There's no anchoring, uh, certainly. Um, so we're not going in there. Came over to have a look. Going to find some place to uh, drop the anchor, and 
I think we'll have a look over there where all those other outcast boats are. Maybe they know something. Well, we didn't end up anchoring over with that other cluster of boats. It turns out they weren't anchored. <laughs> They're all on moorings, except maybe one. Uh, so instead, uh, we went over to the other side of the outer harbor, and this is Nashawina Island. Which is very pleasant. Yeah, we ended up a little closer to shore than I really wanted, I think, but um, that's okay. Uh, so we're, we're somewhat protected from uh, the wind here, and things don't seem uh, very rolly, so that's all good. All right, we have some uh, chores to do uh, before I have my beer, uh, one of which is I'm going to put up the pop-top enclosure. Um, now we, there is some rain in the forecast. I'll have to check the forecast when I have a moment. Um, but uh, they were pretty adamant about it uh, as of this morning. And uh, what with the overcast conditions, I'm not concerned with the greenhouse effect with the pop-top enclosure. So, um, you know, it takes about 10 minutes, as I recall. Yep, about 10 minutes and the pop-top enclosure is up. Uh. We've got the uh, front flaps unzipped to allow uh, some ventilation. If that's not enough, uh, I can get fancier and tie them back. All right. Now I think it's time for a beer. That does hit the spot. It's about six o'clock and actually uh, a little uh, past time to start uh, cooking dinner. Um, but then I had lunch late because of all of the frou-frou uh, <laughs> around getting launched uh, at the boat ramp. Anyway, uh, we're going to make our uh, backpacking uh, tuna noodle casserole. Uh, for dinner tonight because I'm hungry and that's a big meal. Um, so I find I've been using my alcohol stove more and more and relying on the, the butane stove that came with the boat less and less. So anyway, we, we put a little al alcohol in there and uh, we'll light that. That will bloom and burn a little differently as it warms up, but it's burning now so we can just go ahead and put the pot on there and then we'll put the cover on top of that. And we need to bring this uh, to a boil. Uh, so I didn't time it precisely, but in less than 10 minutes, that 12 ounces of water is at a rolling boil. Uh, so uh, we're going to take that uh, off the stove, put the stove out, and put the pot in a towel to keep things warm. And then we're going to stir in this uh, packet of dry ingredients. I don't remember everything that's in there. There's some dehydrated mushrooms and peas. Uh, we're going to add some uh, frozen peas as well. Uh, okay, time to stop talking. Okay, so there's our, our dry ingredients and we added the uh, extra frozen peas and we're going to let that uh, sit um, for 10 minutes. We may stir it occasionally. All right, so the uh, pot has sat for 10 minutes uh, so hopefully our uh, dry ingredients are well on the way to rehydrating and what we're going to do now is take our package of ramen noodles and break it up uh, which is always fun <laughs> uh, and uh, add them to the, the pot uh, and let them sit for 10 minutes there's a, a flavor packet in here you may be familiar with and we're just going to throw that out we don't want it Okay, so the noodles have been in there for uh, about five minutes, and they uh, seem pretty soft. So what we need to do now is open this package of tuna and dump it in there, stir it around vigorously, and then eat it. And so there it is. 
uh, tuna noodle casserole, uh, backpacking style, uh, ready to eat. Uh, the extra frozen peas um, are a good addition, I think, if you like peas. Well, dinner has been eaten, <clears throat> and so it's time to do dishes while we still have some light. Um, so, uh, we, we've set up our dishwashing station <clears throat> with a collapsible tub uh, with some, you know, room temperature water in it. Uh, and we'll be adding uh, some hot water to that. And uh, the first rinse in the bucket in seawater and then the clean uh, cycle there and then we'll um, you know, rinse off in the sink. I suppose it could be more straightforward somehow. I'll think about that. It's about 7.30 and I am reminded <clears throat> uh, that we are hurtling towards the autumnal equinox. It's about exactly a month away. Uh, so sunsets are coming earlier and earlier. And this is probably all we're going to get <laughs> for a sunset uh, today. Although, actually, it's better than I expected by a large degree. So that'll probably be the extent of our report from Cuddy Hunk. Well, other than, you know, tomorrow morning. <laughs>